Vyas Media Network, mm-hmm. right? Uh, I I was talking about, I was asking you for the first time when you were here in 2017, what did you see from far, right? Now you're embedded within us. You are a little bit Nepali <laughs> <laughs> already. Uh, <laughs> uh, other countries go through the brain drain process as well, and other countries have. It's not that people haven't been migrating from Nepal. We've been doing that for uh, centuries now, looking for j- better opportunities and better jobs. Where do we, what do you think? What's your thought process? You know, because both of us are born and probably spent a lot of time here in, our, in Nepal. What's your your thought process on brain drain? Oh, I think it's a here? pity. It's a pity. It should not happen like that. But I understand why some of the young people are doing that. I mean, you need to survive. You need to get money. And if you don't get job opportunities in your country, then, of course, you have to survive and you do what whatever you find. Yeah. I don't think it's a good idea, uh, but of course it has to do with the existing conditions and the education system so far is not providing opportunity for everyone. It's not that inclusive and I'm a, a big fan and I see I see it in my country. Uh, we are the most innovative country, not because we have good uh, universities. We have a mix between practically gifted people and academic. And the majority of people in Switzerland have practical education, TVET. And, and that produces this innovation uh, uh, competence and uh, boosts the competitiveness. So for me, it's about opportunity, create opportunity. Uh, here and TVET is one of the key factor for industry to grow. And if an industry can grow, if you can work together with those well-trained people, that boosts the industry. And then you get more opportunities in the country. As if the country cannot grow, I mean, we will demonstrate tomorrow what is the problem with the current economy in in Nepal. 85% uh, of the companies are saying we don't find the right skills. If they don't find the right skills, they cannot grow. They they try to immigrate people um, because uh, yeah the others are leaving the country. But for me, this is a sign that the current system is not providing the right skills, and that's where we have to work on. It's for me good apprenticeships um, programs together with the industry. Together with the industry, I have to say, I have to insist in that because first of all, young people like to be especially young people like to be exposed to the industry and adult setting. You get more self-esteem, you have meaningful work, you know that you can create your social network with the industry, with the partners. And on the other hand, uh, we see that if you do that, uh, the industry gets the skills. And if it's a win-win situation, why should you? and then if yeah. you grow, yeah. you can move on. The other factor is the permeability in the system. There is only a college, university for progression routes. So far, your national vocational qualification framework is a system uh, approved by the the government. It would allow that you have TVET for level six, seven, and eight. And these are this in a career within the hotel from a cook to a beverage uh, manager to a line manager to a hotel manager. That could be done here. And that is a missing piece. Mm, the catch is, see, there's one more thing that... Uh, that w- I'll give you an example of a friend of mine. He runs a, uh, he used to run, a, he runs a school now. He used to run a hotel in uh, a part of this country. I still remember a moment when uh, we were talking and he mentioned that I'm just a exit, uh, exit hotel for young kids who want to come to Kathmandu. Now, another friend of mine owns a hotel in Kathmandu. Now, obviously, what he says is I'm just an exit uh, hotel for kids who want to go ahead and leave and work outside, let's say, any of the Middle Eastern countries or anywhere else in the world, right? Now, the pay gap, the pay scale, which is one of the reasons why the kids don't want to go ahead and stay in this country? Because the pay scale is very low. Yeah, but uh, I agree. The pay scale is maybe low, but... If you get a training, the economic theory Mm -hmm. are telling you that, and this is in Switzerland, apprentices are paid 20% of a salary of a full trained person, 20% only. Why? Because hopefully they get a good training. And that's the investment of a, of a company. If they have to pay in structure, then maybe you have to afford material or whatever costs. They have to pay the apprentice a small salary. 
but they also have to train the apprentice. And this is education. So that's why there is a, we can say differently, these are students who get the salary on yeah, the way forward. Yeah, yeah. What's your take on this? I think uh, you're talking about post-training employment, right? So if you, um, and in terms of exit and training people, yeah. um, so if you have the apprenticeship and the, the students would have, the youths would have a second motive, they also get a degree. Yeah. Right. So that they have a second motive to stay. And if you're actually turning a profit of by having or your, your net cash positive uh, during those years, I mean, there's no reason to say, OK, they're the exit. But then I uh, they trained. They also were, were productive for me. So that's already a solution for, you know, hotels often complaining like, OK, I hire, I train them and then they, they leave. They're leaving. They're going right. somewhere so, else. That is one side. And in terms of uh, post-training employment, the pay gap that you talk about, this is where I think the productivity and the efficiency comes in. Mm. So if you have the right training, you're already very productive. Mm. Then, I mean, at a minimum wage, you're getting probably 17,000. 500. Yeah. 17,500. Uh, but if you can do the work of two people or three people, which you can actually start doing pretty early, then you, the industry also has the motivation to pay, pay you higher. Right, so it's it's a, a or to upgrade you and make you uh, go higher and higher sooner. Yeah, higher and higher yeah. sooner. And uh, th don't forget the opportunity costs. If they say, okay, we are using immigrants, there are opportunity costs too, and and that's sometimes underestimated. Mm. And of course, I mean the same discussion in Switzerland whether the the salaries should go up. And of course, a lot of people are complaining you don't get enough money. All the prices are going up, but the salary stays the same. You know, <laughs> uh, um, that that's a normal complaint. And it depends on how whether the company is able to pay more. You know, otherwise the company cannot survive. It's it's a it's a little bit about. Uh, good ownership and mm. also good culture in the company that they val validate uh, mm. what kind of and particularly if they want to have the Nepali people here they should care about that that's what I'm saying so tomorrow since you have the seminar you see this, there's a thing that uh, I've been constantly mentioning this to the policy level uh, uh, friends in the policy level the pr people need to get paid I'm not just talking about uh, in private sector, but definitely in uh, government service too. Obviously, we talk about uh, giving service to the common people, but people definitely need to get paid enough so that they could survive, not just in Kathmandu, but all across the country, mm -hmm. right? So I'm sure tomorrow when uh, you're talking to friends from NADA, friends from Hotel Association, friends from CNI, I'm sure this is also going to come up. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, pay... Like different countries have different pays, different mm -hmm. uh, structures. Mm. Uh, the cost of living is different. So, for example, even for me, like uh, I studied in Hong Kong, I studied, I uh, spent some time in London. Um, I came back, but if if you look at my pay now, and if I say, okay, I want to work in 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 London or, or in different places, of course there will be a different pay gap. Yeah. That's reality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So, but then there, there are so many other factors that also brings you here. And then if you start looking looking at the cost of living, the purchasing power parity. Exactly. Uh, then, you know, the, the gap does not become that, that big. That big and that different. Mm -hmm. If yes. you want to study in Switzerland, tuition fees is very low, mm. but the living costs are extraordinarily high. So that means nobody knows whether you can really afford a study. The, the university is the smallest problem. The problem is the living cost. Tapaile hamro clip ek damai enjoy garnu bhayo hola. Aba pure video herna ko lagi chai YouTube ma subscribe garna na birsinu hola. Vyas Media Network.